Welcome to one of the most important skills to master as a Salesforce administrator, the reports and dashboards section, which also comprises 13% of the exam. Let's take a look. You'll be asked to describe the options available when creating or customizing a report. So it's important to understand user permissions, right? You can manage reports and you can delete them from the report folders, even if you only have read or write access and you have created the report yourself. If you can see it on Salesforce, you can. Reports are available under standard object tabs, leads, accounts, contacts, opportunities, reports, cases, contracts, and solutions. So you can find them under the record tab or the reports tab on Salesforce. If you can use a standard report as the basis for a new report, but you must save it first as a custom report to a new folder, under a new name and I'll explain how to do this in a moment. Alright, so describe the options available when creating or customizing a report. The preview shows only the number of records. You will have to run the report to see all of the results and in the demonstration lecture I'll show you all of this but I'm giving you the format almost the content that you need to know right all of this will make sense in a moment so you have four types of report formats you have tabular which show you the contact mailing list list of all accounts tabular is in a way just a list if you can imagine like an excel list of things all right and the most important thing is to understand that tabular report formats cannot be used in dashboards all right and as i said all of this, I'm just introducing you to the language and I will be introducing you to the actual, what it looks like in Salesforce in a moment. So we have tabular reports, which are similar to just Excel. It's like a list, right? Then you have summary. A summary allows you to group your data. So let's say you have contacts and you have opportunities. You could group those opportunities by contacts using a summary report, okay? So this produces graphs. So once you have groupings, you can then produce graphs or charts, and these can be used on dashboards, right? So we have tabular summary. Let's look at the next type, which is a matrix report. A matrix allows you to do multiple groupings, okay? So summary allows you to have a limit of two groupings, whereas a matrix report allows you to do a whole lot more and it allows you to do comparisons by both rows and columns, okay? And not only does it allow you to do comparisons by rows and columns, it also gives you the option to sort the data by averages, sums, totals, and the like. So matrices are really important. Another key and thing to know about matrix reports is that you can use the graphs or charts that you produce in a dashboard. So that's really important. And then finally, you have joint reports. Joint reports are reports that pull from multiple objects. Remember, when you, produce, when you create a report, the report in tabular, matrix, and summary is from that particular object. So if it's a contacts report, you will only be looking at contacts. However, in joint reports, you can actually pull from other report types, such as opportunities, as I mentioned. So you might want to know a specific thing about contacts but on the same page you might want to see something about opportunities and on that same page you might want to see something about leads and so a joint report helps you do that but you can only do up to five different report blocks in a joint report you can add and reorder groupings on summary matrix and joint reports and you can add custom summary formulas to summary and matrix reports right so you can have a summary formula that for example um, averages something or counts something and that's if you use a, a formula for the summary and for the matrix right okay. so let's look at the options available when creating or customizing a report so you have unfiled public reports these are standard folders that all users can access you also have personal custom reports or personal dashboards these are private to each user and cannot be made public Chart values correlate to a report summary fields and pie chart wedges correlate to a report's groupings. This is very important and I'll demonstrate this when we actually build the pie charts and summary fields uh, in the demonstration lecture. You can also use conditional highlighting. 
and this applies to the first summary field column in the table. All right, so this is something that Salesforce might ask you, and I've put true right over here specifically for that reason. Okay, let's, let's keep pushing along. All right, so describe the impact of the sharing model on reports. Administrators control access to dashboards by storing them in folders with certain visibility settings. If you have access to a folder, you can view its dashboards. You can't save dynamic dashboards to personal folders. Folders control access. Remember we spoke about the knowledge management system and how Salesforce has five hierarchies. Well, reports is the same thing. Depending on the folder that the report is in, that determines the access that the person is able to use and also not only the access but whether the person is able to actually view some of the data. So let's describe the options available when creating and modifying dashboards. Each dashboard can have up to 20 components on a single page and save up to three columns. All created, uh, all dashboards are created from existing custom reports. Okay, so what we mean by that is the report has to be a summaries report. Okay, and in that way, because it's customized, you can then put it onto the dashboard. All right. Each dashboard has a running user whose security settings determine which data to display in a dashboard. So for example, when your manager is looking at the dashboard, this is different to perhaps you looking at the dashboard because your manager may be able to see all the employees that report to her. However, you only see your data. Okay. And that's because of the permissions. Once a user drills down into a source report or detail page of the dashboard, the user will view the data based on his or her normal security settings. A running user means that the named user security settings determines which data to display. Okay, And you'll see that in the top right corner of the dashboard. Whose view are we using for the dashboard? Really important. So describe the options available when creating and modifying dashboards. We have dynamic dashboards which shows users data according to their own settings. This is the same dashboard but can display a standard set of metrics across all levels of the organization, right? You have a limit of five dynamic for enterprise and 10 dynamic for unlimited. And this is the obviously the type of Salesforce package that you have. Administrators can create up to three filters for each dynamic dashboard. So you may want to filter for fiscal year, you may want to filter for quarter, or you may want to filter by a specific user, right? That's what we mean by filters. Five dynamic dashboards for enterprise edition, 10 for unlimited edition, and three for developer edition, right? You can't schedule refreshes for dynamic dashboards. You can only refresh them manually. And I'll talk a little bit about that in um, the demonstration. So this edition question here about which you know which dynamic dashboards you have for each edition it may come up in the exam but I've just included it uh, for your own interest as well all right so describe the capabilities of custom report types so up to four objects can be selected from a custom report type and it can have up to a thousand fields 256 columns 65,536 rows okay those are important however I want to highlight this a custom report can have up to five formulas for, for per report, okay? So summary, um, average, all these sort of pieces, right? Some users still need info that is more granular and unique to, their, unique to their job function, so they need to create their own reports. Custom report types allow you to build a framework in the report wizard from which users can create and customize reports, and I'll show you exactly how to do this in a moment. The key thing to take away as well is that when you delete a custom report type, any reports based off it will also be deleted. Any dashboard components created from the report type based off a deleted report display an error message when viewed. So in other words, when you delete a custom report type, it will delete certain fields and therefore you won't see it on the dashboard anymore and it will delete all the fields related to it. And in some cases, it may even affect other reports if those fields are deleted. So this is a quick snapshot of the 
analytics part of the exam, the reports and dashboards. In the demonstration lecture, I'm going to be going through each of these components in more detail and really drawing out some of the knowledge that I've shared with you. It's important for you to write down any questions because I hope to answer them in the next lecture.